For the first time in four years, Islamist militias left the capital of Somalia over the weekend. That surprising retreat was welcomed by aid workers trying to help starving victims of the famine in East Africa. More than 1,000 people a day cross the Somalia-Kenya border and arrive at the Dadaab refugee camp, where our Erica Hill is this morning for a first-hand look at the region's growing desperation. Erica, good morning. Hey, Chris, good morning to you. And it is the worst drought in 60 years that is sending them over the border. It is contributing to this vicious cycle of famine. Right now, more than three and a half million Somalis are at risk of starvation. But they give they give their all to make the pilgrimage to places like this, this refugee camp in Dadaab, Kenya, bringing with them little more than their will to survive and their stories, stories which are now testing the will of the world. <laughs> From the wails of children to the desperate faces of their parents, life in a refugee camp is often far from the expectations of those who risk their lives to come here. She thinks it is worse. It's worse here than it was in Somalia. Yeah. Do you wish you had stayed? Yeah. I never wish to stay there. The scene is a familiar one. These are the images of starving Somalis from 1992. What's happening now is almost a mirror image of what happened 19 years ago. Lieutenant General Robert Johnson commanded Operation Restore Hope, a coalition of 24 nations determined to fight the famine in Somalia in the early 90s. When coalition forces landed in Mogadishu in 1992, the reception was warm. The response, swift. We brought in 48 ships in 30 days and actually landed about 40,000 tons of grain. If you can't operate at that magnitude, you cannot reverse the famine, and it's going to be a long haul. But when a U.S. Black Hawk helicopter was shot down over Mogadishu in October 1993, American empathy turned to outrage. He has diarrhea vomiting. Today, more than three and a half million Somalis are at risk of starvation. But the response this time is far different. With the world economy stretched to the brink and the U.S. military committed to two wars, America isn't as willing or as able to help. I just don't think you're going to get anybody doing it, and we're certainly not going to take the lead. Further complicating relief efforts, Somalia has been without a central government for two decades. And in the south, where the famine is greatest, al-Shabaab, a terrorist group linked to al-Qaeda, is in control and has made delivering aid too dangerous. So Somalis have been fleeing their country in record numbers since the spring. The Kenyan border receives most of them, on average 1,300 a day. Erica, with so many people arriving there every day, is everyone able to get fed? You, you know, it's hard. We actually met a woman yesterday. She's been here for about a month, and she told us on Saturday when she went to a food distribution, because everybody, when they arrive, gets a ration card once they're registered. She said it was so chaotic and there were so many people. The police came in, some guards came in to try to uh, sort of get a handle on the situation. She says she was beaten, and ultimately she left without anything because it was just too overwhelming and there was too much. This is a woman who spent 40 days walking here through the desert with her husband and their two young children who are two and four years old. So uh, in theory, there should be enough. Sometimes I think it may be tough to get it. We are actually planning to go to a food distribution tomorrow here in Dadaab uh, to get a better sense of what it's like for folks uh, as they go and try to get the food to, to keep them going. All right, Erica, thank you. And we will check back in with you in our next hour here on The Early Show. That's Erica Hill in Afrin, Kenya for us this morning.